Aloha and welcome back to another space weather update. It has been about three days since I've done a video, so we have a little bit more to cover. It is currently the perihelion, and so we're going to discuss how the consciousness has been as well as my own. So let's get into this segment. We are, like I said, in the January perihelion, which means we are slightly closer to the sun right now, which perhaps is causing a little bit of drama. And I don't know if you've noticed where on the planet that is, but I've certainly noticed that Japan has taken the lead and has been sort of front page news the last few days. The impact of the huge solar flare that X5 was visible. I watched on Twitter went about 12 hours ago from this point I'm shooting this at 11 a.m. my time was when all of the heliophysicists on Twitter realized that the solar wind wave had really impacted us. So this model they were kind of teasing but in the end we did see some some data about that. We also saw another filament, huge plasma filament coming out the bottom of the sun most recently on January 2nd. That is the second prominence I believe I've seen come out of the bottom of the sun in the last couple days, which isn't normal to see. So perhaps it has something to do with the perihelion situation. But there are people being shot <laughs> and there are fires and there are people in the Coast Guard getting hit by planes, there's people living through plane crashes, there's, you know, information about, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second, there's, you know, in Lebanon there's issues, in Iran there's issues, so we're seeing a lot, and now we're seeing the global current cryptocurrencies, a lot of them are now going down, even though some are going up right now, and I'm seeing both sides of that coin. We're also seeing, so I'm going to show you first the solar wind mo moment where everybody was seeing the shock wave of the X5 sort of hit us on UTC 450 on January 3rd. So that is the mark for those of you astrologers as well. That's your data. But there's a lot going on, but the astrologers have been also trying to make content to explain to everybody why they think that so much devastation in a way was happening during this X5 and the re rebuttal of it in a way that was these earthquakes and now landslides and thankfully no tsunami. I didn't see a tsunami show up, but multiple fires and evidence that there is some um, Liquef liquefaction where <laughs> the earth is melting and there's some buoyancy in the buried vaults and pipes there's like i said some landslides oh, going neighbor. on ah, ah. he starts yelling like he should honestly because the landslide is getting pretty aggressive and it goes all the way up the street towards them they have to leave that position but yeah there's a lot going on honestly like Japan's really feeling it and so now there is mixed feelings about Japan in the planetary history in the most recent history I would say in the last like five generations there's been some traumatic in engagements which are definitely going to come up to the forefront for discussion especially between those in China and Japan but even friends of mine who are from the Netherlands have history and I was posting a little bit of that yesterday in my Instagram stacks so I'm just showing here the evidence of all these physicists online being like, hey, this is when the wind speed and the magnetic field is shifting. We can see all of this. The magnetic field start getting a little wonky and the speed shift. The speed is the easiest thing to follow. But um, there was also a CME as well yesterday other than that prominence out the bottom. But yeah, we're just dealing with these fires I'm just glad to see that everybody was satisfied to see the shockwave of that X5 arrive in the solar wind, even though we all saw Japan just like going through it. And not only Japan, New York was going through it, like I said, and Lebanon was also, Beirut was going through it, Iran was going through it. Like there's multiple locations where there's been an issue, like literally Israeli airstrikes going on. And we're also hearing word that the plates and the <laughs> Phil Flegrayan fields in Italy, which is a word I've never tried to say, so excuse me, but 
the volcanic activity underneath Italy is possibly also liquefying a little bit and getting a little bit spicy, so we're keeping an eye on that. So the human beings and Earth in general has been going kind of wild, and the Mayan calendar here that I've got pulled up is important to me because this is kind of a grounding factor. Those of us not on the regular calendars anymore or the Gregorian calendars anymore branching out, seeking other ways of tracking time and ourselves. We are on the rhythmic 22 blue planetary eagle guided by abundance on January 3rd here, Kin 75. So we are that's really good energy, honestly. Blue planetary eagle. I have a feeling that's why I'm more comfortable going live today. The energies of yesterday was the white solar wizard guided by heart. Yesterday's energy was just a lot. <laughs> and the previous day on the first of the year was red galactic skywalker and it was guided by navigation. So those are the sort of poetic energies to add for the first few days of the year. And so there's a few things I have to add as well for today's video. There are all of these planetary bodies that want to be remembered. So I would encourage you to do that research today if you can about the planetary bodies that are in our, our own solar system before we even start going to other solar systems and galaxies. Why not just become familiar with the bodies that are within normal distance and living within our own solar heliosphere, which is, makes it a part of our soul, in my opinion, or our sun. And so these are our neighbors. This is our, these are the other organs in a way in our solar system. So what are they doing? What are they up to? Who's there? What do they do? I'm curious about these things. Astrologers know the temperaments of most of these places, but not all of them and some of it is less understood or talked about and maybe obviously due to their electromagnetic strength not as complex but there may be moments where one of them is taking the the center stage of pulling the attention of their solar system so I'm curious how much you know about this and if you'd be willing to discuss this more any sort of dreams or contact experiences even with these planetary bodies these moons in our system you can see some of these are actually labeled to have water or being they're presumed to potentially have water and some of them are presumed to have methane it's really exciting to me and there are a few of these images that I was supposed to show you as well as the orbital periods of these planets is more what I also wanted to show you psychologically is something that I really think is going to be coming to the forefront of our culture is understanding what cycles you have with each of these planets. So for example, Jupiter cycles every 11.9 years. So you're going to hit the same themes that you were born to deal with every 11.9 years. You're going to have in a way like a Jupiter graduation every 11.9 years. Everyone knows about the Saturn return or Saturn graduations every 29.5 years. I've just kind of scooched my way out of my first one. And then you can do a whole other Saturn return basically before you hit your Uranus return almost. <laughs> and Well, yeah, you can. And you can almost do three. But your Uranus return is a whole other matur maturation process. And then there's, again, all these other planetary bodies that are doing that as well. So there's a few pushes. And if you're noticing today, maybe the energies are starting to make a little more sense. Our moon, one of the closest ele electromagnetic bodies to us and on Earth, is in the sign of Libra for us and the energy of Libra. So we're dealing with the organs of the kidney, the, the uterary area, like your whole urinary system, your veins, your skin, um, your pancreas, insulin, glucagon, glucagon, all of the goodies there. <laughs> we just moved out of Virgo energy, which is your pancreas, your small intestine, your digestive tract. That's when all of that shaking and intensity was happening in Japan. It has calmed down. The fires are being dealt with. Hopefully by tomorrow, Japan is going to kind of get coalesce and have a little bit of peace is what we're hoping. While the discussion about their history it continues, but there's 
you know, there's other competing narratives in other countries around the world also groaning and moving and literally shooting people through buildings and disturbing the peace on extreme levels. But 2024 is the year of world peace. So that's what we're progenitoring out into the universe now. World peace and mutual solar system peace and a very healthy galaxy for all of us. Those are the goals. And I just want to show you the most recent wave. I don't know if you remember seeing the CME picture I showed you earlier of it going out the right-hand side of the sun, but here is the model of that going towards Venus in the green here and Mercury in the orange here and a little bit of Mars over here in the tip. So our other planetary homies near the sun are getting this next wave and we're getting a bit of a break. I don't know if you're feeling it, but I'm certainly feeling it. I'm feeling the break. I'm feeling like we're in recovery mode. I'm seeing on the Russian charts that we are getting a little bit of break in radiation as well in our atmosphere area, either re, you know, natural or unnatural doesn't matter anymore. It's just watching what it is and seeing how it feels. The earthquakes are beginning to kind of migrate over to Alaska, I've noticed, and towards North America. It seems as though all that energy over here is now traveling up in this fault and kind of shaking up the place in Alaska where a lot of this energy kind of dissipates, dissipates north, I think. But some of it can make its way south over here. And we're going to talk about these areas in a second because there is a part of that. This uh, energy of this particular location is screaming at me today. So I'm going to educate about it really quick after we get through the earthquake segment. Here down in very south, South Africa over by Antarctica again, another a 5.1, 10 kilometers down. We're always watching for that 10 kilometer mark. Let's just click all the ones that have 10 kilometers next to them and watch the, the bubble light up, okay? So boom, this is the most recent one, 10 kilometers down, Japan. Mexico. Interesting. Are we follow, following along? This one was really, really, really deep. 124. Really deep. So this one was an interesting and unique one in my opinion as well. So, but let's continue to the 10 kilometers ones. Oh my goodness. Over here by Iceland the next or previously then back to Japan, back to Japan. Another really, really deep one over here. Very nice in Afghanistan. Okay, another really deep one in Chile. Interesting. Another really deep one in Argentina. We're getting some really deep earthquakes. Wow. Indonesia again, very deep. And then back to more shallow stuff, 10 kilometers. It's 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers. Fascinating. So look at these really deep ones over in South America. So that's more where the impact was of the X5 was this area. So they're getting deeper, shaking deeper into the ground over here, which is interesting. Very cool. Let's continue. So overall shaking of the earth, as you can see, has calmed down substantially. Okay, we'll make one more pass over. So we'll stop at who is the darkest. Uh, New Guinea. Chile again, that makes sense. Afghanistan, that makes sense. We saw those. The Philippines, they're often shaking. It's hard to keep up with them, honestly. So let's now look at the whole model a little bit closer just to show you where the energy is piling up still. Clearly, it's piling up over top of Japan and Russia over here. In this particular sector, usually we're dealing with this area, so it's just migrated north a little bit. The area of interest, it seems like, or impact, or where it dissipates the energy. But over here by Antarctica, there we go. Some bigger ones over here by the base of the planet. Interesting. Yeah, and deeper into the earth over here. Concern, we had a few deeper ones over here. Fascinating. So yeah, it's getting busy. Things are happening. We're readjusting. <laughs> uh, solar flare wise, there's been very few since the last, the X.5. I can barely speak it. It's like, oh, don't utter my name. But the X5 was big 
and was on the first or right before the first of the year. And since then, we've been recovering. Yes, yes, solar wind. Solar wind went whoop, and then data cut off, and then it went up again. Those are all, it's fun to watch the waves come in. They're subtle, but they're fun. Are we watching any more insanity build up? So far, no. Thankfully, I think because the holidays are over, the insanity is also over. Plus that perihelion is also now going to be ending. So get outside, get in the sun, get close to the sun. This is the global consciousness dot. We're literally in this beautiful bright blue color. This is the color that's been coming through so much as well. So visualize this color. I believe this color brings you into an alpha brain state as well, which is great for visualizing, manifesting. So use this tool, use this blue. I have some more things to show you with the planetary bodies when it comes to the arrangement around. These particular bodies over here are still piling up, causing, like I said, we saw that solar flare come out, that big CME, the most recent one from yesterday. It's going to, towards these planets. They're starting to build up some more energy, I would say, in this particular corridor. All of these planets seem to be getting a little bit closer together, so I suspect more energy can be popping out like that X5 did on the side. And we do have some sunspots over there, like it's possible, but they don't look too angry to me, but I've been wrong before, so we're going to keep the study going that I'm here to learn. Okay, let's look at the crypto pricing really fast. Not everything is going down, obviously, but a lot, you can see a lot in the red. I think a lot of people sold and sold some of their investments to kind of pay off their deficit and start off the year with and pay all their bills and everything. Um, been there, seen that, done that, and watching that, but I'm seeing some wins as well. So if you've been following Jace's Conscious Crypto Academy, he's going to be doing more live streams soon on his YouTube channel as well, Cosmic Origins, and check out his Instagram as well, Conscious Crypto Academy. He's going to discuss his wins and his his growth so far. He's had some great success, so very glad and happy for all of you who've been on that together. It's been a fun day to watch somebody get excited about their investments and them going well. It's a great feeling. And I'm just here watching the sun, seeing if anything wacky is happening as usual, and trying to find some correlations between the madness of it all. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Solar wind speed, we're, we're at 477.9, so we're certainly going to be getting some wind speed pressure. It's happening. We're getting a very slow and gentle storm. Some are saying it's canceled again. We didn't get totally obliterated by the X5 because it didn't go directly towards Earth. So none of us are expecting it to be too crazy because we all saw the direction it went out. So we were hoping we were right. And thankfully we were, even though it was still tense the last couple of days. Can you imagine what a direct hit would have been like? And here's the sunspot that did it, I believe. And we're keeping an eye on it and its extreme behavior. <laughs> Let's look at the storms and... The rain coming in really quickly, really brief look. Everything looks pretty, pretty chill and normal. I'll be honest with you. The lightning looking pretty chill and normal, except for this buildup of this storm cloud in the Caribbean. Oh, that makes sense why the, these guys are alerting me, because I think there is something we need to talk about with the weather. Okay, this storm cloud is the one perhaps that we need to talk about. So it's now stimulating the grid over here, but this is the area of the grid that's talking to me. So I'm not sure. It looks like the lightning is a little bit, it's in between those spots a little bit. So before I get into that, I just want to double check that I have everything all lined up for this conversation. Okay, yes we do, I believe. Okay, yeah, here's the conversation about the solar system really quick, more of the planetary bodies. So we got to go big and then we're going to go smaller for a sec because temples have to do with this. So imagine that there's temples on Earth that reflect all of this information. Imagine that's possible. Imagine it's possible. Just take a look at all of these. There's stuff in here that you guys probably don't even know about that's very close to Earth. 
they even have a earth wow excuse me it got way too close we're gonna get there though here we go here we go here we go earth earth trojan so there's like other bodies even in earth's magnetic field that are dragging behind us that we're talking about that i've never even heard of hygeia i know there's so many mars trojans palace oh my gosh sorry this is not a very there's marge all these little trojans all of these moons all of these outer planets <laughs> there's so much to discuss and talk to and reacquaint ourselves with out there so i just got that message and so now to do so even a little closer check out their photography check out when they were discovered and check out the mayan riviera it is a beautiful part of planet earth very 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 favored area and you can tell because there's most of the most popular temples in Mexico are there and I wasn't aware of this obviously when I was going with my family when I was a bit younger but now it's very apparent to me that I was very efficient in my trip over there which is funny because Mex this part of Mexico is nearly over by Belize and the southern border of Mexico itself so you have to fly all the way over basically the entire landmass and you're in this 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 part of the the whole area that's also in a way detached and kind of far off from all of Mexico and what it's up to. It's just this little tip over here that you're hanging out with. So all of the traffic in here is mostly local. No one over here is needing to go to any other neighboring states. It's kind of, it's in a way it's isolated and it is fascinating to me because I've been to this particular area over by Tulum, Cancun, the Mayan Riviera. And I've been over here to Santa Cruz, Huatulco in Oaxaca. But those are the only two places, again, isolated, far off, near the southern border, pretty much away from most of Mexico, Mexico's culture, everything. But there's so much rich culture just packed into this area from the settlements and all these amazing pyramids that wants to speak to you. I don't know if you saw my December video, please go to my YouTube channel, watch my December downloads video if you're interested in knowing the codes that are going to be coming up more and are important. But here again is the sea turtle and the dolphins like really trying to bring our attention like, hey guys, there's something going on. I assume these temples are trying to activate. I assume they're connected to the planetary bodies in our solar system. I guess that's the conversation I'm trying to have. And if you have any more information about that, I'd love to learn more. But these two particular locations were very important for the grid working that I did with Mexico. And I wasn't even as conscious. There's a few more of these pyramids over here by the airport in this province as well. And yeah, I was hanging out over by Port Angel. And that's where I hung out with the most sea life was just over in here. This is where they were all hanging out. And I had the best time with the sea life over here. I had the best time on the peninsula too but it's totally different sea life tropical fish they're really cute and awesome this is where the big guys hang out <laughs> and i was getting to see the dolphins and the turtles and the manta rays and it was really great they were very friendly and sweet everybody was very happy so that energy is coming through for the finale of today's video we haven't had any you know anything to like majorly alert you to that area yet as I was telling you but you see the lightning was building up over there and sorry I'm just trying to find the model I'm looking for and there is a little bit of earthquake behavior happening nearby ish so I'm just going to keep an eye on that and of course everything else that I can to inform you the best I can about what's going on around the world with the temperaments and so on so thank you so much for your support as always and for following my Patreon so I can send you all these videos and entertain you as well as get some support back from the audience for all this effort. Thank you again and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys. Beep, beep, beep.